Thank you very much for introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this very important conference in Arakirov geometry. If I remember correctly, I met Josef uh, first, uh, the first time I met him is in 1980 in Cambridge, I think, if I remember correctly. Since then, I, I met him many times in, 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 in many conferences, and he, he was very kind, and his talk is very impressive, and I'm very, very happy to be here. OK, so let me start. So uh, I'd like to talk about uh, K3 surfaces with certain symmetry, uh, which I call, which, we, which is called uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So uh, I, 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 in this talk, I want to explain uh, the construction of invariants of such K3 surfaces, and which gives rise to uh, automorphic forms on complex balls of various dimensions. And uh, uh, so and these automorphic forms tend to be very interesting, I think. So I want to explain those things. And this is a joint work with Shukaguchi here. So, OK, let me recall the definitions of K3 surfaces. So uh, K3 surface is a compact complex surface uh, which, uh, it, which is trivial irregularity and, uh, and trivial canonical bundle. It is classical that uh, every K3 surface is scalar, and this is due to CU. And uh, the, the second cohomology lattice, which uh, which is endowed with the uh, intersection pairing is isometric to the so-called K3 lattice. So this is a K3 lattice. So, uh, so here, U is the so-called hyperbolic plane. So it's an even unimodular lattice of uh, uh, signature 1, comma 1. And E8 in this uh, talk, E8 is always negative definite uh, E8 lattice. And uh, it is also classical that uh, all K3 surfaces are deformation equivalent. This is due to codilizing. And uh, I set uh, rho to be the uh, cube root of unity, so e to 2 pi i over 3. And uh, script e is a ring of Eisen <coughs> Eisenstein integers. And let me define Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So the pair, because uh, x sigma, is an Eisenstein K3 surface. Here, x is a K3 surface. And sigma is an automorphism of x of order 3, and which acts uh, non-trivially on uh, holomorphic two forms, which acts uh, as a multipl multiplication of rho on uh, holomorphic two forms. So this is a definition of Eisenstein K3 surfaces. In some sense, it's uh, well, it's, uh, there is no uh, multiplication by integers, but in some sense, uh, it, it, uh, it admits a multiplication of uh, uh, cube root of unity. Ah, I'm sorry. This is a surface. Here, here. I'm sorry. This is, this is surface, it's a K3 surface. Uh, I've, <laughs> Eisenstein K3, I'm stupid. <laughs> so, uh, to, I want to uh, explain the moduli space and the uh, mm, deformation. So, all of those uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces, then I, I have to uh, determine the Mm, deformation equivalence classes. And that is given by uh, so-called Eisenstein lattices. So let me define Eisenstein lattices. So a pair consisting of lambda and sigma. So lambda is a lattice. By lattice, I mean a, a free z module of finite rank endowed with an uh, integral, uh, non-degenerate non integral symmetric bilinear form. <coughs> and sigma 
is an isometry of the lattice lambda. And, and this pair is called an Eisenstein lattice if sigma satisfies this relation. Then uh, uh, we can define a um, uh, structure of, of E module, script E module, uh, by, by, by this formula. So multiplication by, by law is given by just the sigma action. So uh, lambda is a lattice. So it is endowed with a, a symmetric bilinear form, which I write this bracket. Then uh, we, we can define uh, a Hermitian form with values in E uh, by this formula. So it is easy to prove that, to see that this is an Hermitian form. And uh, the original uh, bilinear form is recovered from this Hermitian form by this formula. So these two notions are more, are more or less equivalent. And uh, I introduce a unitary group of lambda, which I like U of lambda or sometimes U of uh, lambda sigma, uh, which is an uh, automorphism group of uh, lambda endowed with this Hermitian form. Oops. Which can, uh, uh, which, which can also be uh, expressed this way. So this is a uh, mm, this is a isometry group of the lattice lambda. So this is a uh, isometry of lambda that commutes with sigma. So this uh, is a mm, unitary group of uh, Eisenstein lattice lambda. Now, uh, uh, I consider an Eisenstein case with surface X sigma. Then uh, I consider the invariant uh, uh, subspace of H2 of Z with respect to the sigma action. Then uh, it's because uh, uh, sigma commutes with the Hodge star operator, uh, it's easy to prove that uh, uh, Intersection pairing on this uh, L is non-degenerate, and uh, so, uh, so using that, uh, uh, this is uh, orthogonal complement of L, which I write E, is also a sublattice, and uh, tensor after tensoring with Q, uh, H2X cube uh, decomposes into uh, the orthogonal direct sum of L and. Uh, uh, L perpendicular. Uh, so both L and uh, E are sigma invariant, and uh, one minus sigma is uh, invariant after tensor with Q. We have this relation, so sigma square plus sigma plus identity is equal to zero on E. So uh, E is an E uh, uh, that with this sigma, is an Eisenstein lattice. So, so for um, uh, Eisenstein K3 surface X sigma, uh, we are naturally uh, given an Eisenstein lattice E and sigma. So this is an um, Eisenstein lattice of X sigma. Then, uh, so, not all uh, Eisenstein lattices is realized as, an, as the Eisenstein lattice of an Eisenstein K3 surface. So the necessary and suffic sufficient condition is given by uh, Altebani Saltin, I think, and, and Taki Mao Hashem also. So uh, the E is a uh, primitive sub lattice of the K3 lattice. And, uh, Sigma must act trivially on the, the um, discriminant group. So this is a, a A E is a discriminant group. So it's E check is a um, dual lattice of E. And uh, this is endowed with the so-called discriminant bilinear form. So we have a natural uh, homomorphism and sigma must be uh, uh, in this kernel of this natural homomorphism. <coughs> So this is a 
a necessary and sufficient condition. So um, for an Eisenstein case with surface X sigma, uh, the, the discriminant group of V is three elementary abelian group. That means that uh, uh, it can be expressed uh, this, this way. So, so this A is an important invariant of an Eisenstein lattice. So uh, the deformation types of uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces is given as follows. So it is de determined by the isometry class of Eisenstein lattice E sigma. And the isometry class of E sigma is determined the pair of invariants R and A. R is just the Z rank of E. And A is just the F3, F3 rank of uh, discriminant, discriminant form. Or uh, uh, this, this RE is the Eisenstein rank of uh, the Eisenstein lattice E and uh, F3 rank of the Eisenstein group. And uh, so Arteban is Salty and Taki classified all possibilities and they proved that there exist 24 distinct deformation types of Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So once we uh, fix those uh, data, then uh, uh, we have a um, moduli space. So in what follows uh, the type by type of uh, Eisenstein K3 surface, I mean uh, uh, Eisenstein lattice, uh, Eisenstein sub lattice of the K3 surface the corresponding Eisenstein sub lattice of, K3, of the K3 lattice. Okay, so I want to now explain the modularized space of Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So to do this, I fix uh, Eisenstein sub lattice of the K3 lattice E and a marking of an Eisenstein K3 surface X sigma of type E. It's a marking is an isometry of lattices, H to XZ and uh, the K3 lattice. This is an abstract lattice such that uh, the image of uh, uh, this lattice is exactly the given lattice E. Then uh, I consider E tensored with C. Then uh, I consider the eigenspace decomposition with respect to the sigma action. So uh, we have eigenspace E of, sig e of rho and E of rho square or E of rho bar. Then uh, I define the period, period domain for Eisenstein K3 surfaces of type E as a complex ball defined by this inequality. So this is a projective space associated with this uh, vector space, E of rho, and uh, this is a, one of the riemann hodge bilinear relation. And the, another riemann hodge bilinear relation becomes trivial. And this is a period domain for uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces. And uh, the period of an Eisenstein K3 surface, uh, X sigma, of type E is defined as, as follows. So it is alpha of H0 Kx because it is K3 surface, this is just complex line. So, uh, so this defines the point of uh, projective space. And because it is holomorphic two form, this obviously satisfies this relation and uh, this defines the point of uh, this complex ball, BE. Because uh, we have a, uh, to define a point, we must choose a marking alpha. And the choice of marking corresponds to the action of uh, a unitary group of E. So after uh, dividing this action, uh, this, this uh, this point, this is a unitary modular variety. 
the, the, the point of uni unitary modular variety is uniquely determined by x pair x sigma. So this is a period of x sigma. So uh, for a given, so once the uh, given uh, um, Eisenstein case we surface and we, uh, we choose, we fix a sub lattice of a case, Eisenstein sub lattice of a case three lattice, then we are given a, a point of uh, unitary modular variety. That is a period of uh, Eisenstein case three surface. So, so, uh, so we have a period map, period mapping in this way, but uh, period mapping is not subjective. So there is a divisor which is omitted by the period mapping, which I want to explain now. So the discriminant locus or discriminant divisor HE of BE is defined as the union of hyperplanes H delta, so delta is a uh, runs over uh, delta of E. Delta of E is a uh, 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 root vectors of the lattice E. So it's, uh, it's so they are the vectors of length minus two. So an H delta is a hyperplane defined as a, a delta path. So it's a point of uh, complex ball B E, which is perpendicular to delta. And uh, so, so because uh, this this uh, H delta and also H sigma delta and also H uh, sigma square delta define the same uh, hyperplane because uh, uh, BE is, is just the eigenspace of of uh, uh, sigma action. So this is a, this divisor is called the discriminant divisor. Then a theorem of Alte, Alteba and Itarte Saki or Dolgachev Kondo, Ma or Hashitaki, so is the following. So the, the modular space of uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces of, fit, of fixed deformation type, that is a fixed lattice uh, E, is given as follows. So via the period mapping, the coarse modular space of Eisenstein K3 surfaces of type E is given by the unitary modular variety, precisely speaking, the uh, the risky open subset of the uh, legal modular variety of BE over UE. So this discriminant divisor must be removed. Then uh, I do not use the following result of Mao Hashitaki, but uh, these modular varieties are very nice. They are, uh, except uh, for these two cases, this modular variety is rational. So it's much, much better than usual uh, modular varieties. So, uh, I want to explain the fixed locus of Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So um, because we ha I consider uh, the pair X sigma, and sigma is a symmetry, and so in general, it, in general uh, sigma has uh, fixed points, and it plays a role, uh, important role, to understand um, the structure of invariant, which I explain later. So let X sigma be an Eisenstein K3 surface of type E. So, and, and X sigma is a, a set of fixed points. So it's a, a fixed locus of sigma. Then this uh, X sigma is uh, uh, admits the following decomposition. So X sigma is equal to CG and E1 blah, 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 EK and P1, blah, 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 PK. And here, uh, CG is a smooth curve of genus G. And this EI are minus two curves. Minus two curves are smooth rational curves. 
and um, PJs are uh, isolated points. So this is a structure of uh, a set of fixed points. And the number of uh, this genus, the maximal genus, and the uh, number of rational curves, and the number of isolated fixed points are uh, given as follows in terms of the invariant of lattices. So la rank of the lattice uh, E and the uh, uh, rank of the discriminant uh, group OV. So genus is given by this formula. <coughs> and the number of uh, uh, smooth rational curves is given by this formula. And the number of isolated fixed points is given by this formula. So, so basically, uh, this, this, uh, uh, the topological type of the um, fixed point set is completely determined by the information of the uh, Eisenstein lattices. Okay. So this is, uh, I explain I, what is Eisenstein K3 surfaces, is deformation types, and it's uh, moduli space and fixed lattices. Then uh, I, I also uh, introduce uh, so-called Torelli maps for Eisenstein K3 surfaces. The Torelli maps uh, is a is a map from the modularized space of Eisenstein K3 surface. It is a complex ball to the Ziegler modular variety, AG. And G is the genus of the maximal uh, genus of the fixed curve, a fixed point set. So um, these are signs, uh, the Jacobian of the um, uh, fixed curve to, to, to uh, to each uh, Eisenstein K3 surface X sigma. So this is a um, Torelli map. It's a map from complex ball to, to um, legal, mod legal modular variety. It is originally defined uh, outside the discriminant divisor, but uh, uh, we can extend uh, this map uh, outside a locus of co-dimension two by Borel extension theorem. Uh, so there is some, some sub-variety of ME of co-dimension greater than or equal to two, uh, such that uh, this uh, Torelli map extends to a holomorphic map from MZ to minus Z to the Satake compactification of AG. So AG starts the Satake com compactification. So in particular, so this JE Torelli map is a rational map from ME to AG, or AG star, I should write. And if the dim dimension of M is one, J this JE extends the holomorphic map from ME to AG star. And there is also an important result of Arteba and Isarty, which says that uh, if E is not isom isometric to uh, to these uh, two lattices, then the, the higher genus component of the fixed point set is hyperelliptic. So uh, I think that in this case, uh, uh, fixed locus is in general uh, genus four curves. I forget this case, genus five or something like that. So, uh, in, so except these two cases, uh, the image of the Torelli maps is contained in the hyperelliptic hyper -elliptic locus. So most cases, uh, the, the image of hyperelliptic locus is contained in the hyperelliptic locus. It's, so it's rather quite special in this, in this sense. So now I want to switch to the construction of a uh, holomorphic torsion invariant of uh, Eisenstein K3 surface. Are there any questions so far? So when you say 
you say hyperelliptic, you mean this is Jacobian of a hyperelliptic curve? Uh, yeah, yeah, or just uh, this, this CG ah. is a hyperelliptic curve. Yeah. Okay, so now I want to uh, introduce uh, invariant uh, of Eisenstein K3 surfaces by using uh, equivalent analytic torsion of K3 surfaces. So mm, let me just recall the definition of equivalent analytic torsion. So why is a compact Keran manifold? Then I consider the uh, hodge kodaira laplacian acting on zero Q forms on Y so this is a space of zero Q forms, and G is a finite group. Well, maybe uh, you can mm, define equivalent analytic torsion for arbitrary compact group, but I just consider uh, mu three. So I just consider finite group for simplicity. And, and I suppose that G acts holomorphically and isometrically on Y. Then. Uh, the G action on the space of zero Q forms commutes with the action of Laplacian. So in particular, by this, uh, G preserves the eigenspace. Uh, this is the eigenspace of Laplacian with eigenvalue uh, lambda. So this spec uh, box Q is a uh, set of spectrum of eigen of Laplacian. Then the equivalent zeta function of Laplacian which I write zeta qg, s comma g, is defined this way. So it's a sum over the spectrum uh, except zero, so zero must be removed. So lambda to minus s, and uh, I multiply the trace of g uh, on this, this eigenspace with respect to the eigenvalue lambda. So here is, uh, S is a complex number, and G is the element of G, capital G. So it is classical that uh, uh, this zeta function converges absolutely when the real part of S is bigger than the complex dimension of phi and admits a meromorphic continuation to the whole complex plane and is holomorphic at the origin. So uh, you can prove this by using the uh, asymptotic expansion of the heat, heat kernel. So this is a rather classical result. So because it is, uh, oops, oops, what happened? Okay. Okay, now I can take the derivative of the spectral zeta function as the origin. So the equivalent analytic torsion of Y, G, so G is the class function on the group G uh, of the pair Y, G, is defined as this weighted alternating sum of the derivative of the equivalent zeta function at the origin. When G is a, the identity element, we just write uh, tau of y, and this is usually called analytic torsion. And analytic torsion itself is usually not an invariant of y. It does depend on the choice of metric. So, but uh, for, for Eisenstein K3 surfaces, we can construct an invariant uh, using this quantity, the spe uh, special value of equivalent zeta functions. So now, now I return to the uh, uh, case of uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces. So, uh, oops. So this X sigma is the Eisenstein K3 surface of type E. So X is a K3, and sigma is a um, automorphism of order three, which acts non-trivially on holomorphic two forms. So mu three is the group generated by uh, sigma, and uh, gamma is a sigma invariant Kera form on X. Then I can define uh, equivalent uh, analytic torsion 
of X gamma uh, with respect to this uh, mu three action. So this is a equivalent analytic torsion. I also have a fixed point set that is X sigma, which can be decomposed into connected components. The C, the CI, CI are uh, compact Riemann surfaces, and those PJs are just isolated points. Then uh, I define tau of X sigma with respect to the induced metric of gamma is mm, as a product of uh, equivalent, uh, product of analytic torsion of the curve CI with respect to the uh, induced metric. So this is just a mm, product of analytic torsion of CI. And uh, I define the volume of uh, X sigma with respect to the induced metric as the product of all volumes of CI uh, with respect to the induced metric. It's not a sum, but uh, it's a product. So I, I consider volume uh, multiplicatively and analytic torsion also uh, multiplicatively with respect to the um, uh, decomposition into connected components. So maybe I should consider instead uh, of analytic torsion, but logarithm of analytic torsion and logarithm of volume, then it is additive. But for, 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 for simplicity, uh, let me uh, just define this way. I also, I also define, uh, I, I also choose uh, uh, holomorphic form, holomorphic two form, so which is no vanishing because it is case three, we have such a such holomorphic two form, which is defined up to uh, mm, uh, non-zero complex numbers. And I also define the kind of both chan anomaly, AE of X sigma tau as exponential of one third of integral of over X sigma of this quantity. So it's a logarithm sum, sum function and it's, it's a total charm form of uh, this uh, tangent, uh, tan holomorphic tangent bundle of the fixed point set with respect to the uh, induced metric. So this is, uh, uh, so this quantity, so eta wedge eta bar is a uh, volume form. And this is a volume form uh, over um, y. Uh, over, oh, I'm sorry, uh, over X. So this is also a volume form of X. So its ratio is a function of on X. So you can restrict this function on X sigma. So I, I, this, I also, I, I, I multiply this number. It's a ratio of volume and uh, L2 norm of uh, eta to normalize this, this function. So by this normalization, uh, this, uh, this quantity is independent of the choice of eta. Then uh, maybe it's more, uh, I should explain. Uh, so if this is a decompo decomposition into reducible components, uh, this AE is more precisely uh, expressed in this way. So this is a, a fixed curve, and uh, this is uh, C1 over uh, isolated point. This is just the evaluation of this uh, function as a, a fixed point set. And I also remark that if the metric of uh, gamma, uh, metric gamma is rich flat, then the rich flatness is equivalent to this equation holes on X. Then uh, if metric is rich flat, then the, uh, this quantity is identically equal to one. So that means that this quantity AE, the uh, so log of AE is just uh, zero. So that means that AE is just one. So if you are interested in 
only uh, Ricci flat metric, then uh, this quantity is in fact uh, uh, is not necessary. But it is important that the uh, uh, invariant is defined not only for Ricci flat metrics, but, oh, but uh, it's defined for arbitrary metrics. I mean, of course, sigma invariant. So this is the definition of an invariant. So, uh, so X sigma is an Eisenstein K3 surface of type E. Then we define this real number. This, this is a the term of volume. So this is the Eisenstein rank of the lattice E. And this is the equivalent analytic torsion. And this is the volume of the um, fixed curve. And this is the analytic torsion of the fixed curve. And we have to multiply this both chain uh, anomaly. Then our first result is that uh, this quantity, of course, to define this number, I need a um, metric, sigma invariant metric. But uh, this quantity is, independ is independent of a choice of sigma invariant Kera metric. Um, uh, this is not y, but uh, this is x. So this tau e is an invariant of x sigma. So this, this means that uh, this tau e is viewed as a function on the moduli space. That is a um, ball quotient, complex ball quotient. So, but you have to remove some uh, Higner type divisor or from the complex ball. So this is a smooth function. Uh, so this is a consequence of uh, uh, the, the, the the curvature formula for uh, equivalent current metrics and current metrics due to bismuth Gilles-Soule and Ma. And uh, I want to explain the uh, variational formula for our invariant. So the differential equation satisfied by this uh, formula on the period domain. So recall that uh, this is a discriminant divisor of the complex ball BE. This is a period domain. So it's a, it's, this is a Higner type divisor. And I de denote by tau BE as a pullback of our invariant. Uh, our invariant is a function on this modular variety. So this pi is a modular projection. So this Tau, tau, tau be is a, a function on the period domain. So this is the definition of a, a tau be. So this is a UE invariant smooth function uh, on the complex ball, but the outside the discriminant divisor. On this complex ball, we have a Kera form of the Bergman metric. So if we take a hyperplane of, P of this projective space, uh, which, which does not uh, intersect the uh, uh, complex ball, uh, period domain, BE, then this uh, uh, Bergman uh, Kera form is uh, given by this formula. And I also need a uh, Kera form of the Bergman metric on the, this, this Legal modular variety. This is just a minus DGC of log of de determinant of imaginary of tau. So this is very, again, this is a very classical one. Then uh, it's, it's possible to prove that uh, so this JE, the trailing map, so I, we, con we can consider the uh, pullback of the trailing map, the uh, pullback of this uh, Bergman Kera form of the Mm, on the legal uh, modular variety via the trailing map. So this is a uh, Kera form uh, on this uh, a complex ball minus Higner divisor. So this has a, at most Poincare growth uh, along this uh, discriminant divisor. So this can be extended to a cross positive current on the complex ball. <coughs> then, uh, uh, we can prove that the log of tau BE is locally integrable on the complex ball. 
So we can consider this uh, DGC in the sense of current. And then this DGC of log of tau B is given, given by this formula. Uh, this nine minus uh, Eisenstein rank of the lattice E. And this is a bergman kera form of, uh, of uh, lattice of the of period domain. And this is a pullback of the bergman kera form of Wigel uh, modular variety. And this is a Dirac delta current uh, supported on the discriminant divisor. This roughly says that this is a uh, invariant is a uh, product of uh, automorphic form on the complex ball and legal modular form. Okay, I think I have still 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. So uh, now I want to explain the structure of our invariant. So this is and this, this differential equation and the UE invariance. So this is a, a function which is invariant under the modular group action, that is unitary group of the lattice. These two properties determine uh, this invariant completely except the case, except the case of the case where the moduli space is of dimension one. In that case, we have a cusp of the moduli space and, and that the, um, the cusp plays some load, so. Okay, I want to explain from now the structure of our invariant. So are there any questions so far? Okay. Okay. To explain the structure of the um, invariant, I need some uh, modular forms. So let me, so the first one is, is the legal modular forms. So uh, it's very, not, it's, it's not general legal modular form, but very specific uh, legal modular form that's defined as a polynomial of theta constants. So this is a theta constants. So theta, uh, the Riemann theta constant is defined by this uh, series. So this omega is the point of legal upper half space. And A and B are uh, these this vectors. The parity of the theta constant is defined by four times transpose A and B. And uh, if this number is odd, then this theta constant vanishes identically. And uh, so the only interesting theta constants are even theta constants, and there exist these numbers of even theta constants. So uh, I, I, I consider this uh, polynomial in the variables x, a, b. And x, a, b is a variable parameterized. So this a, b is, uh, this corresponds to even theta constants. And e, k is a elementary symmetric polynomial of degree k in the, uh, this, this number of variables x, a, b. So I define f, k of omega as f, k of theta, a, b, omega to, uh, to the power eight. Then it is classical, I think, that it is a legal modular form of weight for k. That means that for all uh, omega, of uh, at the point of bigger uh, upper half plane and the uh, bigger modular group A, B, C, D. This FK satisfies this functional equation. But uh, I only uh, need this very special uh, uh, one. So these two are important for our, to explain our formula. So this is this chi g to, to eight is a product of all even theta constants, but to the power eight. And this delta g is a elementary symmetric polynomial of, of, of this uh, of degree. So this number is a number of 
uh, non vanishing even theta constants of uh, hyper elliptic curves. So the non vanishing uh, even theta constants of hyper elliptic curves corresponds to certain partitions of branch points of uh, hyper elliptic curves. And uh, what we can prove is that uh, if omega is a period matrix of hyper elliptic curves of genus G, then uh, this delta G is no air vanishing. So this is a discriminant of hyper elliptic curves, I think. Then uh, I want to explain a generic degenerations of uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces. Uh, so I introduced the um, uh, discriminant divisor. And in general, sometimes this is irreducible, but in general, this decomposes into two uh, components, H prime and H double prime. So they are characterized as follows. So, uh, so H delta is a, a subset of H prime uh, so, uh, for, for root delta, we can as associate a, a two lattice uh, generated by delta and sigma of delta. This uh, rank two lattice iso iso isometric to the A two lattice, and uh, if E is not iso uh, isometric to the direct sum of uh, this lattice, then uh, H prime is a uh, subset of this H prime. And uh, this, this can also be ex uh, interpreted in terms of the generic degenerations of Eisenstein K3 surfaces uh, towards this uh, gen point of H delta. And similarly, uh, H double prime so H delta is a subset of H double prime if E uh, splits into the direct sum of the H, uh, A to lattice associated to delta, and uh, it's also one complement. And yeah, so, okay. So, so in general, we have such a decomposition. Then, uh, so this is our main result. So if E is not uh, iso isometric to uh, these two lattices, then uh, there exists an automorphic form, psi E on the complex ball BE for this unitary group of this weight. Uh, uh, this is a weight of an uh, automorphic form such that are invariant. This is our invariant. This is a function on the complex ball. It's a product of the, of the Peterson norm of the automorphic form of the complex ball. And this uh, discriminant of hyperelliptic curves. These two lattices, uh, if it's not isometric to these two lattices, then uh, the, the image of the Toeri map lies in the hyperelliptic locus. So this is nowhere vanishing. And the divisor of uh, this psi e is given by this uh, Higner type divisor. And uh, if e is uh, this isometric to this lattice, g is, then g is equal to 3. And in this case, in fact, uh, our invariant is uh, this legal modular form. So in this case, uh, the modular form on the complex ball is just constant. So, uh, uh, so, so it is uh, given by, it's divisor of this uh, modular form is given by Higner type divisor. So I, I have a question that is, uh, if this modular form is a restriction of a, of a Borchardt product for OE to, to this uh, complex ball. There are some cases that this is, this is a case. So, uh, so let me just give some uh, applications. Uh, so, oops, oops, okay. 
So I recall that the um, modular, modular form on complex ball is called a uh, reflective modular form. If its divisor is contained in the ramification divisor of this modular projection, <coughs> then uh, our Higner divisor is contained in this uh, uh, the ramification of this uh, uh, quasi, quasi deflection of order three. So, and because the uh, divisor of uh, uh, modular form psi e is contained in uh, the Higner, uh, is um, on the discriminant divisor, this implies that following. Uh, except for these six lattices, our divisor, the divisor psi e associated to the analytic torsion of uh, Eisenstein K3 surfaces are reflective modular forms. In this way, there exist uh, 18 Eisenstein sublattices of the K3 lattices, and that admits a reflective modular form. And uh, uh, we, we also have an, another application that the modular space of Eisenstein K3 surfaces of type E is quasi affine except for these three cases. I think that these two cases are these modular forms, psi E. This psi E is just a constant. So we cannot say anything about the quasi affinity of the modular space by, by using psi E. And this is a, another exceptional case. But ex except for these cases, uh, we, by using this psi E, we can prove that the modular space is quasi affine by, the, by, by, by using this modular form. And we can, uh, we also have some explicit, explicit formula. Uh, when the lattice E is unimodular, uh, there are two cases that E is unimodular. And in these two cases, uh, this uh, psi E is just a restriction of the ball charge product to, to the complex ball. And there is another interesting case which I call A2 tower. So in that case, lattice E is just the, <coughs> the this is given by the this uh, direct sum of A2 lattices. Then uh, weight and divisor is given very simply way, this way. This has a, uh, uh, okay. It is, it is just uh, vanishes on the discriminant divisor of degree one. And I, analytic torsion in this case is just the Peterson norm of, of the modular form that characterizes the discriminant divisor. And there is a case uh, which is a modular space of complex uh, of cubic surfaces. And in that case, this modular form was previously constructed by Borchers. Okay. I think I, I should stop now. Thank you very much. <laughs>